Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel F1 Aeronomicist and to the F1 Fridays video edition where we quickly cover the aero updates brought by each of the team and try and ponder upon some of the potential reasons why these upgrades are brought. In this video, we'll try to cover updates from Mercedes, from Ferrari and the Alpine front wing. Well, after the Monaco aero update in which Mercedes got new side pods, new floor and new engine cover, it was kind of expected that a front wing was coming. Now, why is a front wing expected to come? Simply because the front wing determines the rest of the flow conditioning to the rear of the car, right? So what have Mercedes done with this new front wing? Well, the entire front wing has kind of changed. The cord wise and the span wise distribution of all the elements have changed. In particular, the integration of the first element with the nose has changed instead of dipping up, it now dips down. And you know, there is no real inboard loaded or outboard loaded philosophy on this wing. The wing looks quite evenly loaded throughout the entire span, which is kind of indicative of them trying to target efficiency and cleanliness over a certain type of target philosophy in a way. Another really big change is the, is the difference between the wing tip elements. Mercedes had their unique design in which they had their tips exposed. It was kind of a loophole that they found in the regulations. And what it allowed them to do is kind of generate really strong vortex structures, which would roll up and control the tire squish from the front tire, which would kind of do the management uh, of losses going into the flow. However, Mercedes have kind of dumped that entire concept and have gone to a more conventional design like the Red Bull and the Ferrari. Now, some of the simulations that we've tried doing in CFD in some of my studies in the videos on my channel kind of shows that this makes the car less dependent on your. That is, say for example, as the car approaches slow speed corners, there is less unpredictability that might be expected with such kind of a design as compared to a more aggressive design in, in, its, in the form of open shedding tips. So if you want to learn more about what I'm talking about, check out my video on the W14 front wing. Well, let's come to the Ferrari. Ferrari has got a beam wing update, which might sound small, but it is a very big upgrade for them because this is a very Red Bull inspired upgrade, I would say, because they are the first team after Red Bull to have moved on to a single element beam wing. And they've combined that with a T-tray type of secondary element, which is quite neutral in its own right, almost forming a biplane configuration that Red Bull started with last year. Now, why is this big? A, because it would definitely give you a reduction in drag, so a slight boost in top speed, but it might be really really big because you know there have been a lot of rumors of how Red Bull are using their DRS in combination with the single element beam wing to try and create a stall mechanism that would potentially explain the big delta in speed that they have and if Ferrari have understood how this mechanism works and have introduced the upgrade specifically to target this mechanism then this might be the big upgrade that would boost or give the Ferrari the same DRS effectiveness as the Red Bull. So one thing to definitely watch out in Silverstone is to see the DRS effectiveness of the Ferrari and if it makes a big improvement to where it already was. Having a closer look at the Alpine front wing, what you can clearly see is the redistribution of the front wing tip elements. You've gone from a very even distribution of element one, element two, element three and four to a very biased distribution towards element one an extremely thin element two, three, four um, wing tip cord and wing tips in a way. Well, why are they trying to do this? Some of my simulations have indicated that this changes the wing tip vortex merging mechanism so what happens is you are able to bias all the load in element one tip vortex and then the other element tip vortices are just like secondary elements and by playing with the strength of each of the vortex that is shared you can then control the vortex positioning across a larger range of your conditions so as to ensure that you reduce the tire squish losses across all the conditions that are present with for you